from stunning Eugene, Oregon, here on the campus of the University of Oregon. Welcome inside the Matthew Knight Arena as the eight-seeded Converse Valkyries taking on the number one-seeded Baylor Bears here at the NCATA National Championships. Let's just talk about the previous two events real quick. Gannon defeated Limestone, the three seed, defeating the six seed, and then Azusa Pacific just knocked off the seven seed, Fairmont State. That's where we're at right now. And welcome here, Matt Side, Knight Yuretsky, with Janelle Cook, my analyst. And boy, oh boy, do we got ourselves a good one. Baylor, the number one seed. So exciting to watch these Baylor Bears. Yes, they're an incredibly dynamic team. They have a, a wide variety of skills that we're going to see on display today. Um, undefeated in the regular season and expecting to have a big impact here today. Yeah, Baylor is undefeated. They've won every single national championship since Fee Mokley has gotten to Waco. But here we're going to start with the compulsory event and Converse is out on the floor, Converse the eight seed. So the compulsory event, all of these skills are gonna be exactly the same for both teams. These are the foundational skills of acrobatics and tumbling, the building blocks. They help the teams progress to more difficult skills later in the meet. So what you see Converse doing now, we're gonna see Baylor do now. It'll be the only time during the meet we see that. So starting off uh, the sequence, we're in the second sequence of this three part acro heat. Really important things about compulsory execution are going to be synchronicity. You can see there the group on the right had a little trouble keeping that, that stable. So you saw some steps by the base. They came down early, so there wasn't the three-second hold or the synchronization with the other group. So those will be some large deductions right out of the gate for Converse. They went up to that arabesque and the single down and finished the heat strong. So kudos to them for bouncing back after a big error and finishing the heat strong. So that is Converse University competing in the acro portion of the compulsory event. And if you're unfamiliar with acrobatics and tumbling, let's just give you a little bit of summary about the meet. In acrobatics and tumbling, there's going to be six events with 20 total heats. We just finished half of the first heat with Converse doing the acro portion. There's going to be two halves in the sport with the first half consisting of the compulsory event, the acro event, and the pyramid event. Then there's going to be a 15 minute halftime break and then there's going to be a second half which I call the triple T's of toss, tumbling, and teams. And then running score is kept throughout the meet. There's going to be officials that are going to be live scoring, meaning that they're scoring with their own eyes. They don't have the benefit to look at replay or slow motion. They'll be scoring live. And at the end of every single event, they're going to tally up the scores and announce it live. So in the compulsory event, there are four heats, which are the acro heat, the pyramid heat, the toss heat, and the tumbling heat. And we just saw the first portion of it, which was the acro heat. And again, these are the exact same skills that both teams are going to be performing. And this is the compulsory. And this is the building blocks to acrobatics and tumbling. You're right, and and both of these skills, or excuse me, both of these teams expect to come out and execute these skills at a really high level. And both have said, you know, it sets a tone for the meet. They want to come out, do this as well as possible, and set themselves in a good position for the remainder of the heat. So we're aware, awaiting. Baylor right now to start the compulsory acro portion for them and again in the compulsory event it's unique in that every single heat has a start value of 10 so there's 40 points total possible in the compulsory event once you get further along in the meet start values will go up will go down depending on a team's strength and now Baylor will come onto the floor for the acro heat we talked to Coach uh, Mulkey and Coach Johnson prior to the meet, and they talked a lot about this. Coach Mulkey mentioned that this is an opportunity that she sees in the meet to create some separation. So in those acro, in the sacro heat and in the tumbling heat is where you can see some of the biggest variation in scores. And she sees it as an opportunity to create some separation in the first half uh, that, you know, otherwise it's typically a really tight meet and start in the first half in terms of start values. So you see that again, the same sequence here, going to the popover into the inverted skill. 
all of the synchronization and timing as well as the stability. So you can see a little bit of movement there in the group on the right. Normal, you know, it's pretty hard to keep everything completely still, <laughs> and so it's normal to see some movement. They want to minimize that as much as possible. So the switch up, now it's the arabesque. Those legs in the arabesque should be out at a 90 degree angle, and then they do the single down. One thing about compulsory tumbling, or excuse me, compulsory acro, when they go to that arabesque and they go to the fold down, you want to see some rise from the top as they before they go and spin and go down into the catch. So as we look at the replay, we'll talk through it. But this is the first part, the por portion of the acro with the toe pitch, and you see the full off. You can see the landings. Those are important if they're landing too close or too far from the base. Then they go to the straddle hold again. Each thing is held for three seconds, each part of the sequence. They go over to the popover, held for three seconds before they release from the second base. And that's where you see just a, a little bit of movement there and go down to the landing. The third portion of the sequence, they do a switch up. So they start holding one foot, switch to the other. And then they're going to go into that arabesque position. You want to see those legs back at a 90 degree angle. And you can see that rise that I'm talking about before they complete the twist and land in the catch. Catches we've talked a little bit about today, but we'll repeat. You know, we want to see a hollow body position, which is almost flat. You know, you don't want to see a piked position. If the shoulders and the feet are really high up above the hips, that's going to be a deduction in the catches. We didn't see that here, but something to look for as we go through the meet with catches in lots of different events. So that was the acro heat in the compulsory event. And again, there are four heats overall. The acro pyramid toss and tumbling. We're awaiting Converse to come onto the mat for the pyramid heat. And again, the scores are announced at the very end of the event, not d after every single heat. And here come the Converse Valkyries. So compulsory pyramid is new this year. The compulsory committee reviews all the compulsory skills every three years. Not necessarily that there are changes made, but they talk about um, if there should be changes made to keep up with the progression and the evolution of the sport. So pyramid is one heat in compulsory that the committee identified they would like to update. Used to be an inverted pyramid. You see a lot of inverted skills throughout the meet. They wanted to go to these extended positions here. So we have two bases doing a thigh stand with a mid base. The top goes up to that straddle position and does a foot forward into the cradle catch. So we talk a lot about catches. So all of these thing, little pieces that you're seeing in the compulsory event are helping these athletes progress and build into more difficult skills and helping make sure they're perfecting the things that are you know, repeated very often, you're gonna see often throughout the meet. So that was Converse University competing in the pyramid heat of the compulsory event. Let's talk about Converse a little bit. This season, they're the eight seed, nine and three overall. They finished second in the Conference Carolinas. They lost to Limestone University, who was the sixth seed in the championship. And because they even got to the championship, they were actually able to sneak into the tournament. Yeah, you know, Converse has been just a really solid team over the years. Um, they qualified for the national championships in their first year ever as a program, which isn't not, no other program has done that. In, in programs that have been added, you know, as we've grown and expanded past eight teams. Uh, so they had they had a little bit of an up and down season. They started the season really strong. Um, by the time the first, you know, the committee was starting to look at rankings, they had lost a meet, they had some injuries, some illnesses, and so they lost a step and they had to come back and, and build their way back up. But they, as Coach Johnson said, they, so, you know, they started to peak in that conference tournament and they want to find their the apex of the peak here uh, at the national championship tournament. Baylor's now on the floor for the pyramid portion of the compulsory event. So again, we're seeing the same skills, the two base, the primary bases there, the mid base and a thigh, or on the thigh stand, excuse me, and then the straddle hold at the top. Two All-Americans at top there, number seven, Emily Tobin, and number nine, Cameron Kitchens. Uh, and you can see that really high level of execution that we're talking about and that we expect out of these teams. We'll have to look at the replay to see if there's anything I can tell you the officials might be looking for. <laughs> <laughs> so good synchronization there as they come to the top. 
good hold on, on the straddles. The straddles should be at 90 degrees. Those legs should be up at 90 degrees. Looks pretty good. I'm going to leave it to the officials. <laughs> Again, the official scoring live time. They don't have the benefit for looking at replay, and even looking at the replay, it looks pretty good for the Baylor Bears. And I think that's a lot, too, just Baylor being the number one seed. They've been here before, and head coach Fee Mulkey, she is a legend of the sport. Before we get into her a little bit, Converse is coming back onto the mat for the toss -y. So compulsory toss is a back tuck. So what they're really looking for here is the extension of the top off of the basing group. Want to see that the tuck is executed at the height of the toss. And then you want to see the bo their bodies get fully extended before they go into the catch. A really nice job there. You see the group on the right, uh, there's a little bit, the top traveled a little bit and so the basing group did a great job of adjusting for the catch but there will be an, a, a deduction for the movement by the group to catch the top. So obviously safety first, we want to make sure that we're <laughs> catching everybody in a safe manner and they, they moved well as a group together but just some of that angling that they had to do back to catch the top will result in some deductions. That was Converse completing the toss heat, and Baylor is awaiting their turn. But let's talk about Fee Mulkey a little bit. 83-2 and two overall as a coach at Baylor, 116-5 and five in her career. It's hard to beat Fee Mulkey. It's <laughs> 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 appears so. <laughs> yeah, you know, she's one of the, the founding coaches of the sport. We've talked a little bit today about Christy Kiefer, Marianne Powers at Quinnipiac, Colleen Cosrud, who's no longer with us from Azusa Pacific. And so, yeah, you know, she she's she's a pro. She knows the sport. Um, you know, she knows how to coach. She knows how to get the best out of her team year after year to put these combinations together. Part of the fun and the strategy of acrobatics and tumbling is taking young women from so many different disciplines of gymnastics and cheerleading and putting the best, finding their strengths and putting the best combinations out on the floor. And she seems to do a good job of that. <laughs> Absolutely. Baylor coming back onto the mat. So again, in compulsory toss, we'll say, see the same skills, so this will be a back tuck. So again, you want to really look for the synchronization piece, which is huge all throughout compulsory event, as well as the height of the toss and the extension of those tops into the skill and out of the skill. You can see what we talk about in terms of catches there. You, know, th you don't want to see movement from the basing group, and you want to see that hollow bod body position of the top. So as we look at it again, I like how the counter does her arms there <laughs> with the top. So you can see that the, the base has caught the tops right at their shoulders. Not a lot of movement there in the cradle. That was pretty good. I do like the counter moving their arms. Yeah, too. I haven't I, seen that before. I like the secret. <laughs> yeah, synchronization. extra synchronization. Too bad there's no extra points for it, but <laughs> it's nice. That will wrap up no, the toss the heat. Tumbling. Now for the tumbling heat, and here's Converse. That was the standing tumbling. Now here is going to be the running tumbling. So the running portion will be a round off backhand spring layout. You want to see the rise of the layout. So the in a running tumbling pass, a backhand spring, a whip. Those are skills that are meant to accelerate the pass and allow for the final skill for you to see the rise in the final skill and the power and execution that comes with that last element of the pass. So looking at the replay at the standing tumbling, we start with a back tuck. Officials are going to want to see, of course, the landings are easy for us to pick out, but they're going to want to see execution throughout, you know, keeping their legs together, landing with their chest up. You can see on the second portion of the straddle jump in the back tuck, a little bit of lean on the landing, some hops in the backhand spring back tuck. Want to make sure that those legs are together. 
And again, landings are strong and, and chests are up. And you know, with the standing portion, it's, it's especially difficult. There's no, <laughs> they're not generating any power going into the path like they are with running tumbling. So you see the backhand swing here, the rise there. A few little steps, pretty typical when you have eight people out on the floor. It's, a, it's supposed to be a stuck landing, which is difficult. So you'll see potentially some little hops. Those are smaller deductions. Some of those deductions are incremental. So it depends on the severity of the error, how much that deduction would be applied. Yeah, tumbling is the event and the heat in the compulsory that really gets the most amount of deductions. There's just so much room for air in those events and heat. And so a lot of deductions will happen in the tumbling. There's a lot more deductions that are possible compared to other events. But overall, you'll see teams do a pretty good job in the compulsory tumbling throughout the year. I mean, that is the bit building blocks on the season. You start with the compulsory and try to build your way up. up Wrapping up the compulsory University. event will be Baylor now coming on the floor for the tumbling heat. So again, we'll see the same sequences here. Eight athletes on the floor, starting with standing tumbling and moving to running tumbling. Starting with the standing back tuck. Straddle jump to a back tuck. A hand spring back tuck. A little flare to the transition, some that we saw earlier today as well. And then the running portion, round off back handspring layout. And again, some small hops, you can see some steps on the landing. Overall, really good synchronization and, you know, both teams performing at the high level that we expect in the national championship during the compulsory event. Here's Baylor again in the compulsory tumbling. When the founders of the sport created this, it was really a focus on safety and progression. And so that's what compulsories are all about. The teams train these all throughout the fall. So this is what they start with. In addition to strength and conditioning, they're working on drills <laughs> and, and compulsories. And as we talked about, you know, those progressions, this allows them to safely move into the more difficult skills that we're gonna see in the next few events. So that'll do it for the compulsory event. Both teams have completed all four heats. And here's Baylor wrapping it up again in the replay. But that'll do it for us here in the compulsory event. All the teams have completed it. We're gonna step aside and take a break while they tally up the scores. But when we come back, we're gonna announce the scores and introduce the Acro event here at the NCATA National Championships. For the compulsory tumbling heat. Got the scores Got the for the compulsory the event and Baylor already with a three point lead after winning the Acro Heat 9.650 to so Converse is 8.475. The Pyramid 9.925 to Converse is 9.700. Both teams in the nines in the toss 9.950 for Baylor. Converse 9.50. 550 in the toss and then 9.9025 in the tumbling 8.125 for the tumbling three-point lead for Baylor let's go ahead and introduce the acro event and next up is the acro event this begins the optional portion of the meet each team will compete different skills with different possible start values there will be between two and four athletes on the floor in each heat heat one has five elements heat two has six elements and heat three has seven elements the start value is determined by the difficulty and combination of each sequence. This event shows power, strength, and balance to so look for stability of the structure and position of the top. So those are the rules for the Acro event. And starting with the Acro 5 heat, here's Converse University. So in the five element, you're gonna see that walk-in. Um, she has a little release element, so 
Not sure if I saw full separation there. I mean, she did a pop, half a pop around there. She's gonna do a layout off of this. And then she's going up from the ground to extension there with a straddle. And an element that we see in the compulsory heat, the pop over to that inverted position. Both bases remaining in contact to finish out the fifth element. So that was Converse completing in the five element acro. And let's go ahead and look at the replay one more time. Yeah, so the first element, and I, I missed it, so it'll, I like again, we'll leave it to the officials, but that's a release, and so the, you, the officials really want to see the, the height of that walk-in, uh, that toe pitch up there, so that there is, if, if there's a release claim, there has to be separation for the hands. Then they round it out here with the straddle. And the pop over that we see throughout the meet as one of those compulsory skills that they can help round out their five element, six element, or seven element in the acro event. And Converse University in that acro five, four out of the five athletes you saw on the mat were freshmen. In fact, on this team, there's 31 members of the Converse acrobatics and tumbling team, which in itself is a pretty small number compared to a lot of these programs. You can have almost 45 student athletes on a squad. And so Converse, they have 31 student athletes, 21 of them are freshmen. Yeah, um, you know, the Converse is another team that started, um, they, their senior class graduated that year, that inaugural class that started the program, 24 women. And so you have to replace that with a big freshman class. So they're learning on the fly and doing a great job um, contributing to the overall program and the success that Converse has built. So you saw a walk in up there to the shoulder level. And she's going to go to an extended inverted handstand here. And again, you see a little bit of movement there. That, some of that is normal. So and then straddling down the press down, you can see that continuous pace that we've talked about throughout the day on those press downs. Number seven, Emily Tobin, one of the All-Americans, the NCATA Division I Athlete of the Year. You can see on display here why she is so talented. And Riley Chimwala is the base, also an All-American. So another tandem similar to what we saw with Azusa and Hannah Alonzo and Jessica Gill. Those two have worked together now for a couple of years, really find their rhythm and put some great work out together as partners. Absolutely, and not only are they all Americans this year, but they were all Americans together last year as well. And so you'll see a lot of Emily Tobin and Riley Chimwala. Chimwala is a sophomore from Plano, Texas. Tobin, a junior from Templeton, California. And you'll see a lot of them. Tobin, she's been so impressive this year. She's a fierce competitor. She competes in pretty much everything, it feels like. She's in every single event for the most part. You'll see her throughout. And Baylor does a really great job, like you said, recruiting from various different backgrounds. And they have a really, really deep team. And that's very, very talented. Yeah, Coach Mulkey, as we interviewed all the coaches last night, she said the deepest team she's ever had. So That's scary. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so it's fun. it'll be really fun to see tonight what that translates to on the map. Here's Converse University, the six element heat in the acro event. So we're gonna start here with a toe pitch. Which again, there's, you're gonna see some height and the release from the base to the top and then landing at that shoulder level. Number 20, Tanje Lugo, the layout down to the ground. And then a shoulder climb here. And they're gonna do this extended hand in hand. The second base is gonna grab in there. She has to wait until the top initiates that skill to come join the first base and support. And then pressing down to a pike. Really beautiful, continuous speed through that skill. Oh, a pop over. Alyssa Liu doing a great job handling a kick to the face. Uh, so kudos to her. She did not uh, get faced by that, which was really impressive as the top pressed through there. Just got a little bit of the toes uh, to the chin, but maintained her composure. That's pretty impressive. It is impressive, and that's the mental aspect and physical aspect going hand in hand at the same time. And I think that just speaks to the level of mental toughness these student athletes have. You're getting 
physically kicked in the face. And what do you have to do? You have to be mentally sound and not drop the top that you're holding. Yes, absolutely. And you know, something like that could cause an error. She held her composure. So not only physically strong, but like you said, mentally strong. So as the top, um, the other base steps in here, we'll get a little angle here where, oop, yeah. <laughs> and really impressive because she maintained, you know, her stability and allowed the top not to really get hung up there and continue through, <laughs> which would result in some deductions and continuity had she slowed down a, a lot more. So impressive uh, feat, not that we've seen, the first I've seen, <laughs> get to the face for a little bit. First of the day, and I, I guess that's <laughs> why she is an NCATA All-American as a base. You got it. Baylor now coming back out. It's going to be the Acro Six Element. So this is uh, number nine, Cam Kitchens, and the base is Faith Core, and you see him going all the way from the ground, all the way to that extended position. Just one base <laughs> and the top. Really impressive on the strength. We talked about Olympic weightlifting, how that contributes to the speed that they can do that with. And we're doing a pop around, a half turn in the air. And then this is called an in-locate, or they're going up um, backwards there. <laughs> this is Jordan Grundler and Bailey Humphrey as the base. And we're gonna see Jordan Grundler go to one arm. Incredible. <laughs> Jordan Grundler is an acrobatic gymnast, so you can see the influence there. Um, and we talked earlier about Hannah Alonzo and what she did as a base, and it's really fun to see what Jordan Grundler is doing to innovate as a top. Absolutely, and this is a skill that Jordan Grundler came in as a freshman this year and said, hey, Coach Fee, I think I could do this. And you know what they did? They decided to pitch it to the NCATA, and they were able to get it approved, and now it's in competition. I think it's so great that the sport is just continually growing, especially as these athletes grow. Yeah, and we'll see another new body position tonight um, with Quinnipiac, so similar to the one-arm position. We may even see it with Baylor. I'll have to look at my notes, but uh, the planche body position where We'll wait till we see it for me to try <laughs> to describe it. But it is a really cool aspect of the sport that the coaches can pull from the strengths of their teams and the skills that the student athletes have. They can submit skills to the NCHA scoring committee. They provide a value and it's added in for the seasonal competition. So now Converse is going to come back onto the mat. It's going to be the seven element acro heat. They're going to have a start value of 9.90. So this is the first time in the entire meet that we've seen Converse start with a lower start value than Baylor. So starting with the toe pitch there again, and you see that com combination of Tanjay Lugo and Alyssa Lu, and Tanjay Lugo gets incredible height on that layout, maintains a beautiful body position. And then they do a shoulder climb in there, and they're gonna go extended here. Second base is gonna help in on this next piece, which is a one foot there, <laughs> fully extended up, and a 360 twist down. So you saw a little bit of stability there as they went to that extended position, so that'll be a deduction. And then Tanjay Lugo coming back in as the top to finish the heat with that inversion that we've seen throughout the, the day from the compulsory um, skills in the acro heat. Here's the replay again, here's Converse, and they were just able to execute all those skills at the very last second. There's 45 seconds that these teams have to compete and complete all these elements in there. That's the difficulty with the seven elements, is you have seven skills you have to execute in 45 seconds, they were able to just get it in right at the buzzer. Yeah, and, and as you can imagine with the five element heat, not usually much of a factor, but when you're adding in six and then the seven elements, depending on the sequence of that, we talked a little bit earlier about ground touches, you know, if you're coming back to the ground, going back up, some of those takes some extra time, you can see teams run up right against that 45 second mark. That was Converse completing the seven element acro heat. It's the final heat in the acro event. We're awaiting Baylor momentarily. And in the acro seven for Baylor, we're gonna see Jordan Grendler and Bailey Humphrey again. 
And it's so impressive that they're doing this in their first season together. Much like we've seen Emily Tobin and Riley Chimwala work together. Gremler is a freshman and Humphrey is a transfer from a community college. He's a sophomore at Baylor. And both of them in their first season got paired together and it's a match made in heaven. Yeah, I would say so. <laughs> Yeah, it's been really fun to watch. Bailey Humphrey's an incredible athlete. When you talk about physical strength, I think we can look to her as our um, baseline for that, <laughs> or I should say the, the pinnacle of that. Um, and she's just, her physical strength allows her and Jordan Gunler to do some really incredible things together. So I have to have a hard time not looking at the, the muscle definition in her legs and pay attention to the top because <laughs> both of these athletes are so incredible. So you see her going, a uh, shoulder climb, going up to that high hand in hand, that extended position, coming down into the straddle. A little bit of a hiccup in her continuity down to that straddle position. Then re kind of relocating from that extended level to the shoulder level and changing her body position, going back to that one arm skill. So again, <laughs> it's beautiful to see. It's a really incredible skill. For that, the seventh element, they're gonna do a walk-in. They were the, that was a full contact still. They kept the contact there, but you can still see how high <laughs> Bailey Humphrey put her up, even though she stayed connected before she brought her to her shoulder level. Look at the replay one more time, and Bailey Humphrey, the base. So impressive all year, NCATA All-American. Yeah, so you can see as, as Jordan came up there, there was just like a little bit of a break in her movement. So those could be some minor deductions by the officials, but she comes down to that straddle position. And then this is really fun because they're changing levels while they're changing positions, which doesn't happen very often. Usually it's kind of one thing at a time. So really fun to see. And then she goes to that split position to execute the one arm skill again. It's beautiful. I don't know what else to say except <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I think the first time I ever saw them execute that skill together, my mouth just dropped. I didn't know what to say. It's so impressive. The strength, especially in person when you're watching it, it's just remarkable. These women are so strong. Absolutely. And, you know, we, we focus on the strength of the bases, but the, the strength of the tops is important to focus on, too. The abdominal strength as well as the shoulder and arm strength and all the different things that they're doing and what it takes to maintain that balance. Incredible. So that wraps up the Acro event. We're two events through, and we're going to wait to get the scores, but we'll send it to a break, and when we come back, we'll announce the scores and introduce the pyramid event here at the NCATA National Championships. Two events through here with number one, Baylor, and number eight, Converse. And let's look at the score for the Acro event. Baylor, 9.850. To Converse's 9.550 in the Acro 5. 9.90 for Baylor, 9.725 for Converse. 9.850 to Converse's 9.400 in the Acro 7. 29.600 to 28.675 for Converse overall. That brings us to 68.150 to Converse's 64.525. And let's go ahead and introduce the Pyramid event right now. The Pyramid event is coming up. In this event, you will see pyramids that are three levels high. This event has three different heats with different requirements for each. Heat one must have an inversion, heat two must be synchronized, and heat three is the open heat. The start value of each heat is determined by the difficulty and combination of the structure, entry, dismount, and top body position. Some of the things the officials will be looking for are the positions of the tops and sturdiness of the structure. So those are the rules for the pyramid event. It's the final event in the first half of this acrobatics and tumbling meet. So Converse taking the floor here for the first heat. It's the inversion heat. So we're gonna see that inverted body position. You can see them building the structure here. They've got four bases and they're doing a thigh stand with the mid-level bases. So there is a base in the back supporting the mid-level and connecting here for the top. Going, pressing up into that extended position. A little break there, but held on. Able to get back to the position, press down into a pike. Yeah. 
So that's Converse, and, and they had a start value of 10.0 to start here in the Pyramid Heat. Yeah, um, and you see, you know, the difficulty, again, there's various things that contribute to the difficulty for the start values, and there's a lot of ways to get to 10. And so this, you know, there's more bases here, uh, but the, the difficulty comes from the extended position of the top, and then the, the modifiers that take place at the top. So you can see that hiccup there and the continuity as she got to the top. I'm not sure about the, the full three second hold because of that hiccup, but she had a nice transition to the pike. And that is really where the meat of the difficulty comes for that pyramid. And then 180 degrees of twist down for the dismount. So that's Converse competing in the inversion heat of the pyramid event. Again, we're here at the NCATA National Championships. Acrobatics and tumbling, and it has a rich history here in Eugene. V. Mulkey is the coach at Baylor, helped pioneer the sport actually here at U of O. And it's so awesome to just see how the sport has grown. It's grown from just originally six members to now 40 and 41 institutions sponsoring the sport and it's gaining NCA status. It's incredible. It's really, you know, at the when it all began, there were a lot of people out there, trust me, that said, this is never gonna happen. You can't create a sport at the college level. Who even, you know, how is anyone even going to know what this is? And and it was all true, <laughs> you know, it's it's never, that hasn't been done since football uh, over 100 years ago. It was the first, this is the next sport to be created at the collegiate level. But the purpose was to serve this population of young women who weren't getting varsity opportunities. And so we've talked about pulling from all these different disciplines so that these women have a chance to come and compete and do what they love at a really high level. So we're seeing Builder, Baylor build their pyramid in the inversion heat. Also at the ice stand, Bailey Humphrey is the mid base. They do have a secondary base there supporting her. Jordan Grendler going to the inverted position. Holding that there at the top, coming all the way down into the cradle. So that's so Baylor in the inversion. Even the, you know, so there's where we can kind of look at, th those are both tens, but fewer bases for Baylor. Mm -hmm. So a um, little bit of a less difficulty in the dismount, no twist in the dismount, but because they had fewer bases, they had a little bit higher difficulty value in that portion of it. So even though they're both 10, they're difficult in unique ways. Mm -hmm. And the leg position is optional here. You see where Jordan Grundler crosses her ankles. That's just a preference. So if that's something that uh, helps her <laughs> up at there, the leg position is optional. You'll see a lot of, um, of the athletes with their legs split at the top. Some keep them straight together, ankles together, and Jordan crosses her ankles. That was Baylor. And again, going back to this sport, starting at the collegiate level, this is a sport created by women for women to create opportunities for so many future women out there. And it's so awesome because every time there's a program that's added, that's 45 opportunities created for women in collegiate athletics. Yeah, it's incredible. And, it, and like we said, it's really serving a population of young women who weren't otherwise getting this opportunity. Um, you know, limited gymnastics opportunities in NCAA gymnastics. Um, you know, really high elite gymnasts are making it there in NCAA gymnastics. Um, but no place for acrobatic gymnasts, trampling and tumbling, cheerleaders to have this, this varsity competition. So it's been an incredible journey, and this community is so proud of what has been accomplished, and there's, we're just getting started. So into the synchronized pyramid with Converse, they're doing that back bend position for the primary base, one mid-level base holding a straddle extended. So, you know, when we talk about the compulsory in the building blocks, you saw that mid-level base holding the straddle in the compulsory pyramid. So what they did is elevate that primary base to a more difficult position to raise the, you know, the difficulty and build and progress into their synchronized heat here. Converse had a 9.80 start value for that synchronized pyramid as we look at it again here on the replay. Again, that's the straddle move right there. Yeah, and, and really nice execution by Converse. Um, you know, both of those straddles looked like they were great body positions at the top. The synchronization was good. Um, you can see, you know, just the counterbalancing that takes place. And, and we talked about the difficulty for that back base. You can see as it comes off, you know, how that back base just gets put down and absorbs a little bit of the movement there. 
Um, and it's pretty incredible that they can maintain that position. Absolutely. The bases go through a lot of <laughs> <laughs> physical work, <laughs> you'd say. That is a good point. So that was the synchronized heat for Converse University. Baylor is going to come back onto the mat now for their synchronized heat. And they're going to have a start value of 10. So we're going to see Riley Chimwalla and Bailey Humphrey be both of the bases while Cam Kitchens and Emily Tobin climb on as the tops. So again, you see those thigh stands, the mid bit, the level base there, bringing the top to the shoulder level, putting them all the way into that extended position. Again, talking about just pressing another human being <laughs> over your head and the overhead strength that that takes. Um, and you can see even as they're doing that, even the way that they sort of bend to get the strength, you know, to the flex to be able to lift and move the tops to that extended position, all of those elements are synchronized. So we see here, they move together. A little bit of a, I think that's a bear claw there at the top. And, you know, the only thing I can potentially say is, you know, making sure that each of those positions is held for three seconds. And as I'm talking, that looks like three seconds. And then those catches down all the way to the ground. It's just helping them <laughs> absorb <laughs> the impact as they um, come down from that high level. So a really nice job Absolutely. in the synchronized heat. And the little bear claw. I, yeah. I like the little bit of, uh, I, I guess, flash that teams like that. We saw Azusa Pacific earlier today uh, in the middle of the compulsory tumbling. They did a little bit of a flash. We saw a little bit of that from Baylor. And I, I think it's cool when Baylor adds a little sick of bears with a little bit of a hand sign. Yeah, I think so too. And like we said, you know, it's a, it's a fun, loving sport. You know, there's a lot of technicality. There's a lot of really intense focus to make sure that things are done well and safely. But it's good to have fun, too. There's no rule that says you can't have fun. Absolutely. Here is the open pyramid heat. Converse can have a 10.0 start value. So you saw the 270 twist up. Again, familiar structure. The two bases, the primary bases there with the thigh stand with the mid base. Alyssa Liu, All-American, pressing the top there to an extended position. And she's going to do a 180 twist down to the cradle. So really great job by Converse in the Pyramid event. You know, after um, you know having some challenges um, um, through compulsory acro, I think they're going to be really excited about the outcome, their outcomes here in Pyramid Bend. Yeah, their pyramids have looked pretty solid. And Converse is an eight seed as we look at the replay right now. And Converse, they're going up against number one Baylor, female, the absolute legend. And we were talking to head coach Keegan Johnson. I said, does this feel like David and Goliath? And you know what she said? She said that, you know, in the grand scheme of things, this school, Baylor, is probably about twice the size of Converse University, at least the squads. But at the same time, David still won some battles against Goliath. And if they can come out and win some heats in the Pyramid event, I'm sure that Converse is going to be satisfied. Yeah, there's victories that you can look for throughout the meet and and obviously the end result is the one that you want the most but you know coach johnson talked about just that you know it's it's a tough matchup um, one versus eight is always going to be a tough one and it's really about them coming out executing their game plan sticking to what they know that they can do executing at their highest level that's that's the game that's mm. what they can do you know and if uh if baylor does what they do and execute to their highest level there we go. <laughs> Here's Baylor, the open pyramid heat. Again, a start value of 10 for the Bears. So again, the back bend, the mid base there. Riley Chamala, Emily Tobin going to the straddle at the top. And 100, excuse me, 360 degrees of twist down. And they look pretty happy with that as well. You know, Baylor, let's see, I'm looking at the season scores. 
They're averaging a 29.85 in pyramid events. <laughs> or no, excuse me, 29.69 in pyramid event. So Still impressive. About three-tenths <laughs> off over the, the season. And on average, they have five tens throughout the season in pyramid event. So you can tell this is a strong event for them. So that'll do it for the first half of this acrobatics and tumbling meet. We're going to send it to another break, but when we come back, we're going to announce the scores for the pyramid event, and we'll have some interviews with the coaches during the halftime break. Welcome back inside the Matthew Knight Arena. The Baylor Bears just wrapped up their first half against Converse. Baylor, 10.00 in heat number one in the pyramid, 9.475 for Converse, 9.775 for Baylor, 9.600 in the duo pyramid, 9.950 for Baylor in the open pyramid, 9.775 for Converse. That brings us to a total score, Baylor 97.875, Converse 93.375. As we'd like to welcome you, Matt Side here at Matthew Knight Arena, Knight Uretsky, Janelle Cook, and we're joined alongside Fee Mulkey, the head coach at Baylor. And coach, after that first half and getting a 10 in the pyramid, how do you feel? I feel pretty good. I'll take that 10. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, I saw some things wrong with it, but I mean, if they didn't, you know, I'm, a, I'm our biggest critic, so, but I'll take that 10. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, coach, you're a pioneer of the sport, and the first thing I just wanted to ask you is, what does it mean for you that's been so passionate about growing the sport to finally have 40 and 41 members for the sport to officially become an NCAA sport. You have to be careful, Knight, because we'll get emotional <laughs> talking about it. So, no, it's amazing. Um, it's surreal. Uh, we were, I was at, uh, you know, we were at pregame and we were streaming, we were streaming this sport on ESPN+. Plus. And I looked over at my assistant coaches and was like, can you believe this? Do you remember when we used to hope somebody would post the scores on Twitter so we knew what was going on? <laughs> I mean, not only do we get to 40, just look where we are at this amazing arena on on TV. People at home are watching it. Like, it's just amazing. Absolutely. Now, talk to me about the connection between Bailey Humphrey and Jordan Grendler. I mean, they've been so impressive all year, and we got to see a little bit of them in the first half. Talk about those two this year. You know, we partnered them together early in the year. Jordan comes from a strict acrobatic gymnastics background, competed internationally, very, very talented. Bailey was actually artistic gymnast and then did some acrobatic gymnastics later, like senior, junior, senior in high school. And they just fit right in the beginning. And um, they're both so humble and so sweet and just work their tails off. So um, we haven't, we've just scratched the surface with what these two are going to be able to do, you know, in Jordan's four years. I mean, Jordan is incredible. Mm -hmm. I have to remember to watch her because I'm so impressed with Bailey and how <laughs> strong she is and her, her leg muscles. I just, I marvel at her. I marvel at them both. Yes. But. So tell us, uh, you know, strong first half, obviously obviously talk about a little bit about the second half getting started in the toss event through team yes so toss is not our thing like it's just <laughs> not I'll I mean every I think a good coach should know their strengths and weaknesses toss is not a strength of ours this year um but we're gonna do a, we're gonna do well we're gonna get as many points as we can we've worked on it we've worked on different little aspects of it um and we've worked also worked on our tumbling event I think um if things go the way that they should we've tried some new things and um we hope to see the execution there it's not so much start value up it's more execution um that we're hoping to, to bring around so um, and then team events fun so I mean I hope we uh, you know I think we're, I think it's gonna be fun I think they'll do well awesome thanks for joining us. yeah yes. thanks for having thank me. you so much for coming aside we're gonna step aside real quick and right before we go back Baylor with a 97.875 to 93.375 lead it's the halftime break and when about 13 minutes ago we'll be back and we're gonna have an interview coming up with Converse University's head coach Keegan Johnson Welcome into Matthew Knight Arena. The Baylor Bears currently leading Converse 97.875 to 93.375. 
And at this time, we're gonna welcome you guys back. Matt Side, Knight Yuretsky, Janelle Cook, and Keegan Johnson, the head coach at Converse University. Coach, you guys are down at the half. What are you looking forward to seeing from your team in the second half? I'm very proud of everything our team put on the floor. Um, we really came in here just wanting to have fun and do the best that we could. We had a little rocky start in um, the uh, compulsory event, but I think we've really rounded off nice in that pyramid event and just looking to continue to build upon what we finished that um, first half with. Yeah, it was awesome to see how they rebounded from that at mid uh, heat and then how they've come out in Acro and Pyramid and really put out a great performance. Um, you know, we've talked a lot about the sport today and talked a lot about this group of uh, freshmen that you have a young yes. team. You graduated a huge class last year and they're putting together a great effort tonight. Talk about overall, you know, their performance. Yes. Uh, of yeah. the season and then you know a little bit about what you're expecting in the second yes half. i couldn't be more proud of this team currently we have 21 freshmen and only eight returners wow. weren't sure what to expect and ending here at the national championship was really just a dream come true for this season um, i couldn't be any more proud our seniors are great leaders and our freshmen are really stepping up to the plate um, so making it to nationals um, has been an absolutely amazing experience and we can't wait to finish it strong quick key to the second half what do you want to see most as we come through. Yeah, freshman Krista Gaines will be competing a new tumbling pass in that first heat. Um, feeling really confident. She's going to put it all on the floor. Um, just wanting the girls to do their absolute best, um, leave it all on the mat, and finish it off with a strong team event. Thank you so much for joining us alongside here. Good luck in the second half and enjoy the weekend. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thanks, Keegan. So these are the scores from earlier. Number six, Limestone fell to number three, Gannon, 266.700 to 261.105. And then Azusa Pacific, the two seed, knocked off number seven, Fairmont State, 267.940 to 257.155. We're at halftime here of the Baylor Converse match. And then later on tonight, the meet everybody's looking forward to. Number four, Quinnipiac versus number five, Oregon. That one should be really exciting. And now after the halftime, we're gonna move to the toss event. And let's go ahead and introduce you to the toss event. Next up is the toss event. Here you will see a group of athletes toss another athlete into the air. The top will perform a flip and or twist in the air before being caught. There are three heats in this event. Heat one is the salto toss. Heat two is the duo toss in which two groups will need to throw synchronized identical skills. And the final heat is the open toss heat. The start value of the toss depends on the skill that the top executes in the air. The official will be looking for the height of the toss, the top's body position, and tight catches from the bases. So those are the rules for the toss event and Converse is already back on the mat. This is the 450 Salto Heat and it's a 9.50 start value for the Valkyries. So we're gonna see a back layout 360. So that's a full twist in the laid out position. So that was Converse competing. And I apologize, I missed the kick modifier there. I thought, wait a minute, she did the wrong thing, but it was me that did the wrong thing. So I missed over here to the side on my notes the kick modifier. So she was actually doing a, a 360 layout with the kick at the front end. So you'll see a, a leg split here on the front part of the skill. You can see how the leg split come back together. She completes the twist and comes into the cradle. So. A good start. Um, you can see a little bit of movement there, a step by the base, uh, the, the, land, the catch landing off to the side. There's going to be deductions for that. So probably not the start that they wanted to the toss event, but two more heats to go to improve and maximize their scores. Absolutely. That was Tanya Lugo, who Coach Johnson really had high praise for. She described her as the most versatile athlete on this team. You're going to see her tumble. You're going to see her as a top. And so far, we've seen her throughout the meet, and she's definitely been a key player for for the Valkyries. Yeah, she's a senior, and like she said, just a really versatile athlete, all around <laughs> kid. Uh, you know, you saw her in the Acro event, those high, beautiful layouts that she did here in the toss, and again, like you mentioned, in the tumbling event coming up. Her sister, Timey, was also a Converse University athlete. She competed on the acrobatics and tumbling team, and she was an All-American. Yeah, and it was really fun. They tumbled together in the duo pass. So it was really fun, and they were very synchronized. It was incredible to watch. <laughs> I can imagine. 
Baylor now going to come out for the 450 Salto. They have a start value of 9.90. So this is going to be a double. So a laid out position, doing a flip, and two twists in the air. So again, we're looking for the extension off of the base and the catch. And, and you see a little bit of trouble there in the catch as well. Um, Coach Mulkey joked that <laughs> this is not their event. Um, and, you know, they're going to just try to do the best that they can, maximize the event, and move on to tumbling where they're traditionally very strong. So as we look at the replay, you can see traveled a little bit in the air. So when they came down and landed, landed a little bit to the side. Bases had to move a little bit to make that catch. So there'll be some deductions there for Baylor in this heat. Must be really tough for Vee Mulkey when the toss is the struggle and you still have start values of 9.90 and 10.0 in the tosses. Yeah, I think, you know, she's referencing execution. <laughs> you know, um, a lot of these these teams are always going to work up to those those higher valued tosses. Um, they've done different combinations. You know, we saw Gannon with the Arabian. Uh, we've seen the back doubles. We've seen the kick doubles. So toss is a, an event where there is fewer skills to select from overall compared to acro or pyramid where you have all these different combinations. And those few really high star values, the kick doubles, the, the hardest one. That's the only 10. Um, so I think I, I'm guessing she was referring to their overall execution not quite being at the <laughs> level of the other events this year. Absolutely, and like she said, she is her team's biggest critic, and she's going to be very critical no matter what. So that was the 450 Salto heat. Again, in the toss event, there's three heats, the 450 Salto, the synchronized, and the open. Converse, they're going to have a 9.00 start value for the synchronized toss, and really that's probably the hardest event or heat to even compete in. Yeah, the synchronized toss is really difficult because now we're taking these aerial skills and trying to put two groups out. You've got to make sure that you're working on the timing, the height, the execution of the skill, the catches, all of those have to be at the top notch. So Converse is opting to do uh, just a layout toss here so there won't be any twisting in this heat. And like you said, that is a lower value, a 9.0 start value. So the keys here for them to, in order to maximize their score are going to be the, the position, the laid out body position and maintaining that as well as the height of these skills. So the, you know, the extension, you don't really see the change in the extension like we did in the tuck tosses because the body's staying straight. <laughs> but you want to see that flight and the timing of that flight as they come through together. I thought they did a really nice job. And it was interesting on there, as you look into the replay right now, you can see Tanya Lugo, she's a base this time. She's not the top. And right. That's the versatility that we were talking about. Yeah, and, and it's very common in acrobatics and tumbling. You can um, you can base one heat, you can be a top in the next. Um, you know, we see people, primary bases to, to mid bases. Um, I can think of a lot of athletes over the year that were it, those all-around athletes, you know, and that's the cool thing. You have all-around athletes and you have specialists. So if you have someone who's really strong in a lot of areas, they can compete in up to 14 heats throughout the meet. There are repetition rules. You can't do it all. <laughs> you have to spread the love around. Um, and that creates a lot of participation opportunities and a lot of opportunities, you know, like in other sports. If you're a utility player, you can move around. You move them around. Um, you know, if, you, if you're in basketball, you're going to center your offense on your best player, right? Uh, but you also have... You have three-point shooters, you have you know rebounders, you have all those role players, and so that's the cool part about putting these rosters and these teams together is that you can have your all-stars and you can have your specialists to round out your roster. Baylor now coming back out for the synchronized heat. They're gonna have a start value of 9.90. Nine, so this will be the same skills that we saw in the first heat. The back double, so two twists in the laid out position. And you can see that group on the left there is the group that came out there for the single heat, improved that toss from heat one to heat two, improved the catch overall. Didn't see that same movement um, that we saw in the first heat for them. So kudos to them for you know making that correction and moving on to the next heat. Again, with synchronization, we talk about you know, there's there's that part is hard. So I think you saw um, Emily Tobin over there may have come through a little bit low on that catch. 
um, came through and you could see she really had to pull her toes through and was a little bit piked as she came into that position. So there may be a lack of extension there, um, a deduction applied there. But really nice to see that other group take that just from one heat to the next, what, three, three <laughs> minutes ago, and make the improvement. Absolutely. And Baylor, they're a team that makes improvements mid-meet, and they're, they're able to do that. Throughout. Yeah, absolutely. You see that with experienced teams, you know, and, and you across all sports, you see that with experienced teams. If you have a mistake, we've talked a lot today, and all of the coaches talked a lot about the mental aspect. And if you let one thing ruin your meat, especially in a meat mm -hmm. that has a duration of a couple hours, you're going to be toast. <laughs> so you got to rebound. Go back out there and do your best the next opportunity. Absolutely. And I, I think the mental aspect of the sport definitely goes a little bit overlooked. I mean, you're watching the physical talent on the mat, but there's so much that goes into it mentally that you just kind of forget about it. It, it just you, doesn't come off the screen, if that right. makes sense. Right, right. Yeah, the physical feats are so impressive. You don't think about that mental side, but I think that's probably the bigger picture. At least that's what the coaches have shown. I would, I would say that mentally is about... 60 to 70 percent of the sport yeah all right so converse is back on the floor for the open heat we're going to see back salto layout 360 which is a full so we're going to see a laid out position a full 360 degrees of twist and again looking at that i was <laughs> you can tell they're excited you heard coach johnson right in front of us yell good job um, so you can see a good improvement um, from the beginning of the toss event for Converse to close out that open heat. So we look at the replay, you can see the, the height that they get here. She executes that twist and really gets herself back into position to be caught. That was a 9.40 start value for Converse. And going back to kind of what we were talking about, about these student athletes coming from different backgrounds, it's really cool to see the sport grow to a point where you're actually recruiting athletes to compete in certain positions. In basketball, you're recruiting shooters, you're recruiting rebounders. In acrobatics and tumbling, now you're recruiting bases, you're recruiting tops, and that's just so awesome to see, especially as the sport has grown. Yeah, it's grown so much. You know, when I started, I was in the, here at the very beginning, but, you know, the coaches described that they're really out there just still educating, just trying to let people know about these opportunities. And so really taking any athlete that was very athletic, that had some, some background in the skills, and bringing them on and then teaching them what they needed to know here. It's really evolved to the point where they're going out and seeking from these specific disciplines, and people are looking to fill positions on each team, like you said, as tops, as tumblers, as specialists in different aspects of the events. Here's Baylor in the open toss, a 10.0 start value. So this is that kick double we talked about, the highest value toss um, in the event that's available. And Emily Tobin, the All-American, she's been competing this heat throughout her time, competing for Baylor. And it looks like a nice heat for Tobin. You can see again, you can choose the way that you angle your group. So they chose to face um, you know, the sideline and it allows you to see the height of that skill. It allows you really to see the split from the kick. Um, but And the twi she executed her twist nicely and came through, kind of pulled through again there to make sure she got into that catch. So there might be some slight de deductions there on extension into the cradle, but overall a nice heat for Baylor. So that was Emily Tobin, the junior from Templeton, California. And she was wrapping up the open toss and that'll do it for the toss event, but Right after they tally up the scores, we're gonna have the tumble event. So don't stumble, be back for the tumble when we come back here at the NCATA National Championships. Just wrapped up the toss event, let's get you the scores. Baylor in the 450 salto, 9.275, Converse 8.900. In the synchronized, Baylor 9.425, Converse 8.475, and then in the open, Baylor 9.625 to Converse's 9.100. That brings us to a total score, Baylor 126.200, Converse 119.850. So now we're going to move on to the tumbling event, and let's go ahead and introduce you to the rules. This is the tumbling event. This event has six heats. The start value of each heat is determined by the difficulty and combination of skills in each pass. 
The first three heats are synchronized, a duo, a trio, and a quad tumbling pass, in which all athletes in the group must execute the same tumbling pass from start to finish. The last three heats are individual tumbling passes with different requirements in each. The officials will be looking for form, execution, and proper technique of each skill. So those are the rules for the tumbling event. Converse gonna start. It's gonna be the duo pass with an 8.75 start value. We're gonna see Chloe Cleveland and Oasia Moore. So we saw this duo come out, round off, whip, two backhand springs into a layout 360. So as we look at the replay, we can talk a little bit through execution, but a good start for them to tumbling event. You can see the synchronization is good. Uh, and you know, a little, some little things there. So we can see, again, we have the benefit of replay to walk through these. <laughs> but, uh, you can see a little bit of chest down on the landing. Uh, we talked a little bit about steps and tumbling in earlier parts of the meet. So you can declare a step. Um, everyone has declared steps tonight. So we can get that out of the way. And there has to be controlled steps. So the, the intent of that is, or the understanding of controlled step is that you don't need to take the step. You land and then you step. If you see the momentum carrying the athlete into the step, that's gonna end up as a deduction. So that was Converse in the duo pass. Again, an 8.75 start value. Baylor, on the other hand, in their duo pass that they're about to perform, they have a start value of 10.0. And we're gonna see Kristen McCain and Emily Tobin for the Baylor Bears. So we're gonna see them compete a round off whip, Arabian, round off back handspring one and a half. So look for the height of the Arabian and the final skill. <laughs> Incredibly synchronized, <laughs> a little chest bump there to celebrate the, the pass. Um, so as we look at the replay, we can see there on the landing that Kristen McCain went off the map, but incredibly synchronized, good continuity through that Arabian because of the way they're twisting and turning in an Arabian under one and a half in the middle of the pass, you'll often see some a break in the pass. They flowed right through there into the second portion of the heat. Kristen McCain did take some steps and go off the mat, so there'll be just some deductions for that. But overall, executing this high-level skill in the duo pass with this synchronization and execution, great start for Baylor. How many points are deducted for you if you step off the mat? Um, stepping off the mat is a tenth. If you land off the mat, it's five tenths, so a big difference. So you'll see often athletes kind of adjusting as they see themselves, you know, moving through the pass, getting close to the end of the floor. So there'll be some deductions for the steps and the additional deduction for stepping off the mat. We're now going to move to the trio pass, and Converse is going to bring out a 9.10 trio pass. We're going to see Tanya Lugo, Ayana Manning, who we haven't really talked a lot about yet, but she is a very, very great athlete for this Converse team. She was Division II Freshman of the Year, and it'll be really great to see her with Lugo competing. And then Ashlyn Voorhees is going to be the other member of the trio pass. And of course, we want to watch all three, but this will be a fun event to see Ayana and Tanya and their execution, they're known for their tumbling, um, so they're, they're hoping to carry the trio pass here and maximize their score. Lugo's gonna be on the near side and then Manning's gonna be in the middle. So we'll see them do a round off, back in spring one and a half. So look for that synchronization, the height of that skill and the steps, those finishes at the end. So looked really nice. Uh, I did see what I would say was not quite a controlled step. Again, as you're doing that one and a half, it goes into a blind landing. And so you often see that lack of control in the step on those blind landings. But overall, really synchronized. Um, a little bit, well, I guess now that I'm looking back here on my fourth replay, I see they're a little bit out of synchronization. So there'll be some small deductions for that. Some feet apart there. Number 11, please give me her name again. I was so focused on Tanya and uh, Ayana. Oh, Voorhees? Ashlyn, yeah. So a little bit of legs apart, legs separated there. So there'll be some small execution technical de deductions there. But a great trio heat. 
Absolutely, and Anna Manning, this season, she's competed across 11 heats, especially towards the end of the year in the Conference Carolinas Championships. That's really rare for a freshman. Yeah, we talked about that a little bit with some of our other athletes, and as a freshman to come in and be able to adapt, Coach Johnson talked about how what an athlete she is and how adaptable she is and how she came in and just, just really slowly worked herself up to more and more heats over time. Baylor going to come back out for the trio pass. This is our lowest start value in the tumbling event, a 9.60. We'll see some front tumbling here. So they're going to start this pass with a front hand spring into a front tuck. Then they'll go to a round off, backhand spring, one and a half. Really nice. So that was the Baylor Bears. <laughs> There's Asia. a little bit of a look of surprise, <laughs> which... <laughs> oh, looks like the mats are coming apart, so we'll have to correct that. Yeah, they've had to adjust the mats constantly throughout the day, it feels like, and that's probably just the testament to so many meets happening at once on these same mats. You gotta think by the end of today, when all four meets of the day are finally wrapped up, this mat's gonna be pretty beat. As we yes. go in and look at the replay one more time, Baylor Bears, so impressive. Yes, absolutely, and I, I was watching the, the mat correction, so I didn't watch the replay, but you see there, they're incredibly synchronized, you know, maybe a fraction of a second as we look back at that on um, some separation, but overall, uh, really nice heat. Uh, you can see, again, those steps, probably a little bit of a lack of control in those steps and a little bit of a lunge forward, but overall, with the start value difficulty, those are often um, deductions that the teams are willing to take in order to really elevate that skill and um, maximize their start values. So now Converse going to come out for the quad pass. Four student athletes going to be on the mat, an 8.50 start value for the Valkyries. So this will be a round off backhand spring full. So again, really just looking to maximize what they can in this heat and using four athletes out on the floor at the time. And four Converse, that was Jamie Sheridan, Mackenzie Leary, Emily Claire Carter, and Mason Turner. Yeah, and good execution. You can see that they're synchronized. You often will see, and I think it's interesting as we talked about synchronized heat versus solo heats, but how um, number three here, she's starting way farther back <laughs> than her group, but they managed to catch up and synchronize. So it's just interesting how the athletes, they travel different distances. Mm. You know, they might have a different run into the heat, but how they can come together and keep those skills synchronized and final, uh, the get them all set through the final skill. Well, that's just adjustments that coaches are making. It's the same thing that they're doing in the tosses where you have to time up uh, different throws if you have a smaller base compared to, or a smaller top on one side compared to bigger bases on the other side. Maybe you have to time it up a little bit different so it looks synchronized. And that's exactly what they're doing right there. They're adapting on the fly. And I think that's a great part of this sport. Baylor now coming out for the quad pass. This will wrap up the team portion of the tumbling event. For Baylor, we're gonna see Bree Harris, Ayla Kalustian, Courtney Coven, and Ton Bernstein. We're gonna see some front tumbling and again, a front hand spring right to the round off. Excuse me, front tuck. <laughs> front tuck right to the round off, into a backhand spring one and a half backhand, or Excuse me, man, let me start over. <laughs> we'll, we'll, I'll start over on the replay. Front tuck, round off backhand, spring one and a half, round off, full. And you see there that there was an error, um, a fall, that'll be considered a fall. Any um, time an athlete touches the mat, other than you know with their feet, if it's a knee, an elbow, a hand, that's considered a fall. There will be a penalty for that. It looks like she just got a little bit stuck there coming out of the one and a half. Couldn't quite regain her momentum to execute the round off and the 360. How big of a deduction is it for a hand being put on the mat? I'm Now I'm questioning myself, but I'm pretty sure in tumbling it's considered a 1.0. A 1.0, yeah. wow. That could be a huge deduction. Baylor went out with a 10.0 start value. Which I guess that is the example why you maybe have a lower start value of a 9.80 or a 9.75 is because when you have a start value of a 10.0, there's a cause for error. And if you're going to lose one point, then potentially 
that's why you take a little bit of a lower start value. Absolutely. So that'll wrap up the team portion of the tumbling event. There's still like three more heats to go. There's gonna be the aerial pass, the six element pass, and then the open pass. All of those are gonna be one student athlete. And this is where me and Janelle differ a little bit. She's a real big fan of the synchronized portion of tumbling. I am more of a fan of the single tumbling event. We can, there's enough in this meet. We can all have our favorite things, right? And maybe we'll have some sort of Twitter debate or something and we can get all of our <laughs> acrobatics and tumbling fans to weigh in on their favorites. I'll have Angela Urban set that up. But we, um, yeah, I, the solo, the synchronized heats are so much fun. It's cool to see those elements put together with different group sizes. The solo heats are where these athletes really get to shine and we see some fun combinations, some really elite skills and some really incredible tumbling. So Converse going to come out in the aerial pass with a 9.90 .90 start value. We're going to see Krista Gaines. So we're going to see a round off, three whips, and a full to the end. Really impressive. Look at that reaction. <laughs> Big hugs and big cheers from the teammates. And I, I think that's a great thing about acrobatics and tumbling is just the teamwork and the support for these student athletes. It is, and you know, part of the excitement there is that Krista Gaines upgraded this past four nationals. She's been competing through the season with two whips. So she added that third whip in there prior to the full. And so you can see how excited her team were, were for her that she got to come out, elevate that pass, competed in the national championships, and we'll see where she lands with the final score. So that was a 9.90 aerial pass. It's a really impressive upgrade for her, and I'm sure <laughs> she feels very satisfied for that upgrade. Yeah, it's great to see her teammates support, and that's the fun part about the sport, as we've talked about, all these different opportunities to get out there and shine. And it's wonderful to see how the teammates come together and support each other. For the aerial pass for Baylor, they're going to have a start value of 10.0, and we're going to see Tori Harris, the junior. All right, a little bit of an error there for Tori Harris. She was all set to execute a front hand spring front tuck, round off back hand spring one and a half, into the round off 360 and a similar error there in transitioning through that one and a half to the round off full. She just lost herself a little bit there. You can see, you know, she tried to rebound with her arms, uh, but wasn't quite able to regain her um, herself to finish that pass. So she didn't complete the last element of that pass. So there will be a neutral deduction for that. And then there'll be the execution deductions leading into that. So she managed not to fall down. So kudos to her. She kept her um, her composure and just wasn't able to execute that round off and that final skill. So there will be a neutral deduction. That won't be the score they're hoping to see out of this heat, but no doubt uh, Tori Harris will make an adjustment. Coach Mulkey talked about how they have lots of different options in these solo passes. So it might be something that they change, mm -hmm. you know, if they're advancing in the tournament. Um, she talked about how they were gonna see how things went. So unfortunately it didn't go Tori Harris's way today. How big of a deduction is it for not executing a skill? We talked about it being one point deduction for falling down. How big of a deduction is it if you don't complete a skill? So that's half a point, five tenths. So that will be taken in addition to the execution deductions that occurred prior to that. And again, Baylor is a very, very deep team. And moving forward in the tournament, this is the opening round against the 8 seed Converse. They do have a little bit of leeway to really experiment, especially right now with them in entering into this heat up by six points or over six points. 
And so Baylor, throughout the weekend, we'll see them experiment, see them maybe have different options. It'll be interesting to look at the com competition roster for today and compare it to the competition roster for tomorrow if the Bears do eventually move on. Yeah, so the advancing teams have two hours after their meet to make changes, resubmit their file that they prepare before the meet that includes all of the skills that they plan to compete as well as their lineup. So the coaches will have two hours to make those decisions and plan for tomorrow. Now for Converse, we're gonna see Tanya Wuga. Starting out here with the front hand spring, front tuck into the round off, two back hand springs, and a one and a half, but unfortunately a fall there in the landing. And um, unusual error for Tanya Lugo. No doubt disappointing for her. I was think she was hoping to qualify into event finals, and so unfortunately that's gonna be tough um, with the fall there. Absolutely. Looks like, looks like she yeah got there to that back hand swing, just under rotated, didn't quite get her feet underneath her well enough to be able to execute that blind landing. Yeah, just a little bit low. You can see um, on other skills that you've seen her today, you, know, she, you can really see how she elevates. And then as she mm. came out of that final back handspring, she didn't quite have the height in that skill to finish and complete that rotation and, and execute the landing. Yeah, and you mentioned that she was really hoping to qualify for the event finals. Can you just talk about what it takes to actually qualify for the event finals? Yeah, there will be five uh, groups or individuals in each heat for event finals in the acro, pyramid, toss, and tumbling events. The four of the qualifiers come from today's meet, so the top four scores from the quarterfinal meet. We also have at-large qualifiers in every heat. So those are teams that did not qualify uh, from the regular season. Those teams have an opportunity to qualify as an at-large uh, qualifier by posting the highest regular season score. And that's really exciting. I think that's probably my favorite part about acrobatics and tumbling is the event finals because you get athletes from these small schools that you've never heard of, but they get to come here into the NCATA finals and they get to compete for a national championship despite not being a top eight team. It's yeah, awesome. Especially as these programs are growing or, you know, they just might not be your team's year. And mm -hmm. sometimes that happens. You know, there's only eight teams as we grow now and there's more and more teams competing. Those chances to qualify are slimmer and slimmer. So the, uh, the event finals and those at-large qualifiers really give teams an opportunity to, if they are specialists, if they have you know really outstanding athletes, they can take that performance from the regular season and bring it to the national stage. In the six element pass, Baylor gonna have another 10.0 start value. And it's Emily Tobin. So we'll see Emily Tobin do a round off, a whip, Arabian. Round off backhand spring one and a half. Wow. Really nice pass for Emily Tobin. She's had some difficulty through the season, much, you know, some uncharacteristic mistakes. Um, she had a fall here at Oregon in their final meet here. Um, and so that looked like the, <laughs> the national player of the year right there. You can see how she comes into that Arabian. You can see how she rises out of that skill continues into the second half of the pass, really look, makes it look effortless. And what goes into her being selected for that type of award? Yeah, so really the there's an awards committee that makes selections. There's weekly honors for the athlete of the week, specialist of the week, and freshman of the week. And then um, at the end of the season, the, there's All-American nominations, and from those nominations, those um, divisional awards, specific awards are selected. So somebody like Emily Tobin has, as we mentioned earlier, we see her all throughout the meet, and she's competed at a really high level throughout the season. So, um, you know, it's it's a combination of uh, what they've done, how they've scored, you know, and it's it's all it's pretty hard to, to select one person because of the group nature. It's hard to really select one person that stands out. Um, but Emily Tobin is one who stands out. Here's Ayanna Manning. The Division Two, as we talk about national awards, the Division Two Freshman of the Year there. You could see her competing her pass. So we look back at the replay here. She starts with a round off and goes to a whip, back to another two backhand springs and the one and a half. So the one and a half is the most difficult final skill that you can have in a tumbling pass. And it has that blind landing. In artistic gymnastics on a spring floor, you might see two full rotations. 
but for safety purposes um, and, and uh, what, again, with no spring floor, we're limited to the one and a half. So a great pass for Ayanna Manning. Manning, she's been impressive this year, like we said. D2 Freshman of the Year. She was two-time NCATA Freshman of the Week this season. Uh, she had several NCATA Freshman of the Weeks. Honorable mentions throughout the year. I mean, conference she, honors. Conference yeah. honors. She's off to a great start. Yeah, it's going to be really fun to see her develop, and that's one of the cool things about naming those Freshman of the Year awards and, and being able to expand that from one award for the association to all three divisions because there are so many women doing incredible things. Here we have Bree Harris from Baylor. Fifth-year senior returned. She tore her Achilles, recovered from that injury, and came back to <laughs> give us this tumbling. When you talk about dynamic tumbling, wow. She is just a powerhouse. And we'll, as we look back at the replay, she comes in, she starts with a front tuck, round off back handspring, one and a half there in the middle to a round, round off pull. And this is a controlled step here. Watch here as we get to the end. This is what we're talking about. Land, step. <laughs> so beautiful pass. I expect, you know, Brie Harris has been the anchor here for Baylor throughout the season and scored incredibly high throughout the season. I expect we're going to see that again tonight. So that'll do it for the tumbling event. Again, there was six heats, the duo, the trio, the quad in the team portion of the tumbling. And then we just saw the aerial, the sixth element, and the open pass in the solo portion of the tumbling event. The officials, they're tallying up the scores right now. So we're going to take another break. But when we come back, we're going to introduce you to the scores and the team event here at the NCATA National Championships. So we got the scores for the tumbling event. And here they are, Baylor 9.375 out of 10, and the duo Converse 8.100 out of 8.75. In the trio, Baylor 9.275 out of 9.60, Converse 8.75, or 8.575, excuse me, out of 9.10. In the quad, Baylor 7.250, so that's gonna be because of that tumble and the fall. And then for Converse, 8.225 out of 8.50. In the single aerial, Baylor, 8.300. There was a little bit of a fall right there out of 10. In the aerial for Converse, 9.525 out of 9.90. 9.75 out of 10 for Baylor in the six element. 7.700 out of 9.55 in the six element for Converse, 9.925 out of 10 for Baylor in the open, 9.100 in the open for Converse. That brings us to 180.875 to 171.075 as we enter into the team event, or as I like to call it, the two minutes and 45 seconds of organized chaos. Let's introduce you to the team event. The last event is the team event. This is a very fast-paced event, so be sure to keep your eyes peeled. The team event features up to 24 athletes on the floor, performing synchronized acro, pyramid, toss, and tumbling in a routine set to music lasting no more than 2 minutes and 45 seconds. In the team event, the officials are looking for the stability of the structures, body positioning, and the technique of the tumbling. So those are the rules for the team event. Converse going to have a start value of 100.07. A lot of points to be claimed, and this one's going to be exciting. You're not going to want to close your eyes for this. <laughs> you said it well. We've talked a little bit throughout the day, but we'll remind you what's all going to be included in this event. All of the skill categories that you've seen so far. Acro, pyramid, toss, standing tumbling, and running tumbling. 30 acro elements required. Uh, five tosses, four pyramids, 21 standing tumbling, 21 running tumbling.
So that, that'll do it for Converse in the team event. I wrote down notes as they were going and just kept writing clean, 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 clean. <laughs> it looked really good. I thought they did. Overall execution was really good. We didn't see any major errors. So as we look back, maybe we can nitpick a little, but um, you know, you saw really great synchronization. Overall, you know, there's gonna be small deductions that we've seen throughout the other portions of the event, right? So in acro, you're gonna look at stability. You're gonna look at those body positions. Uh, but overall, I thought Converse really maintained their composure. They kept a nice steady pace through the event and executed really well. Again, as we talk about potential deductions in team event, it's such a huge amount of points and there's so many skills. The biggest deductions, the biggest area of deductions are in acro and in tumbling. With tumbling, 42 total passes, 21 standing, 21 running. A lot of those have to be synchronized. So. When we get to the end here, it's just a chance for these teams to show some personality, have some fun with the choreography. Uh, but overall, I thought Converse did an incredible job and we'll be really happy with that team event. So that was Converse in the team event. And I guess at this time, can you just talk about what the officials are doing during the team event? Because there's a lot happening. How are they able to manage and really see everything that's happening? Yeah, absolutely. So there's um, three officials doing execution during the meet. There's two that are designated as line judges. So they're watching for those big errors, any falls, boundary violations, spotting of teammates that's, that isn't allowed. Um, and so they're looking to catch all those big neutral errors. The execution de judges are looking generally at three areas of the mat, but the teams submit their, their team event all in a diagram. They lay out all of the sequences. They lay out where on the mat that will be. And so the officials have an opportunity during warmups to watch the team event, the walk through and say, okay, if all of the um, acro events are over on the left side, it doesn't mean that one official is responsible to watch everybody at the same time, mm. <laughs> but they'll break that out. So they'll say, all right, I got the group in the front, you get the group in the middle, I'll get the group in the back. So they have an opportunity to really make sure there's only allowed to be three things going on at a time so that at least one official can be looking at one um, skill category, one group at a time. Now here comes the Baylor Bears in the team event. They have a start value of 108.51. We talked with uh, the coaches, you know, ahead of time. Just looking to execute this cleanly.
So that was the Baylor Bears competing in the team event, and it, it wasn't perfect, but they still executed really, really well. Yeah, they did. You know, they did have some, uh, one fall here in the far right corner of the mat, um, and she did go off the mat, so we'll see some deductions for that, a minimum of a 1.5 for the fall and additional execution deductions. But they were really similar to Converse. I was not seeing a lot, just the typical things that we see throughout the meet, the continuity and the landings, um, the synchronization and tumbling. We're looking at acro, you know, thinking about the continuity there and the synchronization, landing. I mean, those are the, the small technical things. There weren't a lot of large errors aside from the unfortunate fall here in the corner. Looks like she just under rotated and lost her uh, her bearings there and, and came off the mat. But overall, you know, good execution. That, that's something that they'll um, take from here and go. And of course, we get to have the we got to have the front row view to the the one-handed acro there in front. It's even more impressive up close. So that'll do it for the team event. This entire meet has officially ended and now they're tallying up the scores. We're gonna step aside and take a break while they tally up the final scores. Get us with the official final, but don't go anywhere here at the NCATA National Championships. Welcome back to the NCATA National Championship. Here's a little bit of update for the score so far today. Gannon beating Limestone 266.700 to Limestone's 261.105. And then Azusa Pacific, the two seed, beating Fairmont State, the seven seed, 267.940. Fairmont State's 257.155. We're about to get the final scores for the team event here, so we'll finally figure out who's gonna win between Baylor and Converse. Baylor, obviously the number one seed going into the team event. They had a lead of about nine. And so it'll be interesting to see what happens in the team event. And we finally do have the scores. So for the final team event scores, we'll see and there we go. So Converse. 89.120 in the team event. Baylor, 91.325. Baylor wins 271.325 to 260.195. Nonetheless, Converse is celebrating and they're happy. And despite getting the loss, I think there's a lot of positives for this meet for Converse. Yeah, I'm looking back at their season results and that's one of their uh, higher scores on the season. So I'm sure they are celebrating just the culmination of all of that and a successful night on the floor. And I, we, the, unfortunately, the fans missed the action. There was a dance circle, and we saw Coach Johnson do the worm. So that was an awesome celebration of the season for Converse there as they close it out. Baylor's gonna move on in advance. They'll be taking on the winner of the Quinnipiac versus Oregon meet. That meet's gonna be taking place in about 30 minutes or so. But we'll be back in about 30 minutes for Oregon versus Quinnipiac, don't go anywhere.